Why? 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 Good morning, everybody. I'd like to, first of all, thank everybody for taking time out of their schedules uh, to come to this press conference regarding Recruit New York here in New York State. Also, I'd like to uh, thank the Wendeville Fire Company for opening their doors to host uh, this event this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the first volunteer fire department was organized in 1736. The fire service has seen many changes and improvements throughout its history. It started out with bucket brigades, gentlemen running water to, to fires. Then we moved on to horse-drawn carriages, transporting hose right to the fire scene, and then motorized equipment took over. A lot has happened in the past 286 years. As you can see right behind me is a state-of-the-art state type of equipment that most of the fire departments um, have in their firehouses today. But one thing that has not changed in well over 200 years of existence, and that is the need for the brothers and sisters of the fire service to provide protection to their local communities. Across New York State, member enrollment of volunteers is down in our fire departments. However, our call, call, call volume is up for fire, rescue, and EMS. <clears throat> Today's firefighters are responding to more calls now than ever before, and these calls are increasingly diverse. Between medical emergencies, flooded basements, down power lines, automobile accidents, and of course fires, big and small, there is a real need for more volunteers in all our departments. And this is why we are here, ladies and gentlemen, to kick off FASNI's 13th annual Recruit New York campaign. More volunteer firefighters are needed here in New York State to help meet these 21st century challenges. Recruit New York will be held this coming weekend, Saturday, April 23rd, and Sunday, April 24th. FASNI focuses entirely all year long on recruitment and retention, but Recruit New York is the signature program that we created to help boost the numbers in our fire, in our fire departments here in the state. With boosting these numbers, fire departments can continue to provide the optimum level of protection in their respective communities. This weekend, FASNI is urging residents to visit their local firehouses. Our volunteer fire departments will be conducting tours of their facilities, putting on demonstration, uh, showing firefighting techniques, and of course, any questions that you may have to go ahead and join the ranks of the Volunteer Fire Service here in New York State. Once again, I wish to thank everybody for coming here this morning, and we hope that all of you will go ahead and, look and visit your local department this weekend. Also, you can go to a website, recruitnewyork.org, to learn more about this program, to, and also uh, that website does go ahead and indicate which departments are participating in Recruit New York this weekend. Once again, thank you very much. And I'm Andy Pilecki, the Director of FASNI for the state. Right now, I'd like to call upon Jonathan Schultz to the podium to say a few words. He is our Niagara County Fire Coordinator and Director of EMS uh, or Emergency Services here in the county. Jonathan. Thank you, Andy. This, this is truly is a, a great week. You know, FASNI kicking off their Recruit New York campaign, not only here in our county, but across New York State. You know, looking out there to get our volunteers numbers up, so important to be able and ready to respond for our communities. 
you know, recruit New York is a busy time, getting all our stations opened up, our firehouses opened up, to the community to come out and see what's done day in and day out by our, our volunteer fire service across the state. They do yeoman's work for our communities and save us millions and millions of dollars a year providing excellent service across all communities. This is a great week to get out, see your firehouses, see what they do, see how they help our community and how you can get involved. Not only this week, but any week of the year. You know, yes, this is the, the paramount time to get out with Recruit New York kicking off, but really our firehouses across the state are open anytime. We're looking for anybody to get involved and help us out, whether it's through EMS, it's firefighting. We look for people even get involved with administrative work, you know, keep our firehouses, firehouses running, keep our businesses running. There's so much to be done and that call volume is exponentially increasing day in and day out. And a lot of our crews are really needing to help out there. So it's really a plea, not just this week with the kickoff of Recruit New York, but it's a plea for me and my fire coordinators across the state to get involved, reach out, help out the community, help out your fire departments to get involved. Thank you very much. Get your name again. Yeah. Jonathan Schultz, fire coordinator, director of emergency services. Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, next, I'd like to call upon uh, Russell Geske. He is uh, the representative from Senator Robert Ort's office. Russ? Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today representing Senator Ort, who is a strong supporter of the fire service and in particular Recruit New York. Growing up in Sanborn and living in the town of Niagara, the firefighters of the in the volunteer service were always a part of our community. Now these people had jobs and families, but when that fire whistle sounded, they responded. And we knew when we saw those cars and trucks going towards the fire hall with their blue lights flashing, they were going towards danger and not away from it. And as Mr. Schultz said, when first responders go out on a call, they have to be laser focused on the job at hand or they might not come home again. So what they don't think about, but what is vitally important in this state is the millions and millions of dollars that they save every year by their service. So. We thank them for their service and we hope this recruiting drive will be successful in boosting the ranks. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. And also we do have a representative here from Assembly Persons, uh, uh, Karen McMahon's office, Joe Popoleski. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna conclude our press conference for this morning. If any of you gentlemen and ladies would like any information you can, uh, about the equipment that's behind me, you can just see any one of the gentlemen here from the Wonderville Volunteer Fire Company. They will be more than happy to show you uh, the equipment or answer any questions that you may have. Let's ask you a question real quick. Um, pandemic obviously was a problem. Are we seeing any uptick, any change of interest? What's going on in the state? Do you have any ideas? Actually, uh, right now, uh, because we weren't able to fully run the campaign the last two years, uh, as we normally do. Uh, across the state, there is less volunteers that have um, uh, signed up to go through the necessary training to become a volunteer, both fire and EMS. Are there incentives being offered? I remember pastures or some incentives, uh, college credits or something yeah. like that. Yeah, FASNI does offer what's called, uh, it's, it's the help reimbursement where a student who is a member of a volunteer fire company can get up to $1,500 towards their tuition, as long as they are an active member of, of a fire department and going to either a community, private, or a state college. A lot of the towns and the villages do offer the length of service program, which is also an incentive. Uh, where depending on the amount of years that you put in of active duty, there is a incentive uh, when you do retire that there is some, a stipend uh, that you do get. Also, uh, in regards to uh, the state and the assembly, several years ago they did go ahead and pass a bill where a active volunteer fire, a active volunteer fire company, firefighter does receive a $200 credit on their New York State income taxes. If people were to volunteer, what type of training do you offer? What type of 
Like how, how much are they committing? For that, I'm going to call upon, we do have a state certified fire instructor, Mr. Sean Crispin, to come up and answer questions on uh, training hours and so forth. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Sure. All the all the training provided is completely free of charge, both on the fire side as well from our partners in the Department of Health for EMS training. Um, it, there is there is a, a sizable commitment. Um, the the initial training for to be an interior firefighter is approximately 140 hours, and for an EMT is approximately 180 hours. Um, after that initial commitment of time, the the training classes are broken up into smaller segments that make it more manageable for our volunteers to be able to. Um, access training. The state does a phenomenal job both at the county level and at the state level of providing um, multiple times uh, and multiple schedules of, of fire training and EMS training to make it accessible for the majority of our members. So they feel like certified in different EMS <coughs> techniques? I mean, is it Sure. So there's uh, in the EMS world, there's different levels of care um, from a certified first responder all the way up to the paramedic level. And, and each of those are increase of hours in training. Um, and with the training, you have more skills than to, to provide to our patients. Can you go back? Go ahead. No, I just want to identify. Yeah, that's right. Like, sure. My first name is Sean, S-H-A-W-N. My last name is Christman, C-H-R-I-S-T-M-A-N. I'm currently the first assistant chief at Wendeville and also a, a New York State fire instructor. So if one of us drops over here, we're in good hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the people behind me are the ones going to be the, the jumping in and getting their hands dirty. <laughs> I guess my, my last only question is, so it's, is it based around where you live, like as to what firehouse you would be assigned to? Or how is that? Uh, yeah, so in Niagara County, um, each municipality or each town pretty much has a, a responding fire company or, or some towns have multiple. Town of Wheatfield has five. Um, so that it is based on, on where you live, although many organizations accept members from outside of their district um, that can, you know, they say they can meet the requirements. So whether the, you uh, go to school in the district, you work in the district, or you live in the district, um, there's many opportunities in, in multiple fire departments. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. <laughs> You're very welcome, Sean. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this morning. Uh, news media individuals here from uh,